occasions with won this championship and was a judge here in 1960. We're going to see today exactly the same as those we saw last year. Um, yes, they are, Peter. Basically, everything is the same, except, of course, we must allow for each judge being able to, within the rules laid down by the Kennel Club, set his own course as he thinks fit. Now, today's judge, uh, who is Mr. Charlie Wyant, has laid out a course which, to me, appears very straightforward and easy to work. But of course, again, we must remember that the tension in that big ring and the handler's nerves can play havoc with a good dog. So we'll just have to wait and see. And that's the setting. So the 1980 Crop Obedience Championships get underway as usual with the send away. Now in this, the handler sends the dog across the arena to that box marked out with the four white cones. The small box in the center just marks the center and the small dogs Any ought dog. to be in that. So the first dog we're looking at is last year's winner, Spring Farm Myth, with Mrs. Barbara Igledon. Muriel. And Myth can always be relied upon to do a very good round. Unfortunately, in this drop on the send away, you will notice he is over the lines for which he'll lose a mark or two. For your dog, right turn. And of course, the event isn't over until the dog is properly recalled and they've come to a right halt. Turn. This looks very neat. Right turn. He won't lose any marks on the recall. Oh. Nice tidy right finish there. Well, in fact, loses two on the actual send away. This is the judge, by the way, Mr. Charlie Wyant on the right. And he's casting a very careful eye over our next competitor, Jans J, handled by Mr. P. Poole. This dog comes from Lincoln and is a very well known worker. As you can see, he's very fast and a beautiful send away tail wagging all the time he's quite pleased with it about turn and the voice you hear in the background giving the instructions is the chief steward right you'll turn. be hearing his voice throughout all the events giving the instructions to the handlers right turn right turn halt exercise happy minute. looking dog there rightly so because it's faultless absolutely clear there jans j this next one is Chalkwell Greywood Danny with Mrs. Watts. This is an interesting point because Mrs. Watts this year has qualified three dogs in these championships. And I'm, I think I'm right in saying that the whole thing is a record. Three dogs has never been done before. Oh dear, he's right through that box. He didn't well, drop him quickly enough. Signal Charlie, if it's all right. About to turn. He's not paying attention. Boy, dog. And he didn't hear the handler. Watch. Extra right command turn. there, which will lose him further points. Right turn. And a jump up, which is not allowed. And every right half turn. point quite critical. Thank you. And in fact, he's lost four, but he doesn't know that. As we look at the first of the German Shepherd dogs in the competition, this is Gnaza Stefan. He's known as Chally with Mr. M.R. Farrington. Very popular, the German Shepherds in uh, obedience championships. Well, Mike and Chally come from Hampshire and are very well known all over the country. This dog is a complete extrovert, enjoys his work, and has done a beautiful send away there. Can't have lost any marks on the drop. can use the whole box, of course, there. Big dog. A nice recall, fast. Beautiful bit of heel work to finish. Well, at this high level, the judge has faulted him, even on that splendid performance. Half a fault, half a point. And that brings our look at the send away to a close. We can move on to the retrieve. Now, this always provides a certain amount of merriment for the audience. And we're looking at a different German Shepherd this time, Dawnville Black Earl of Maraglin with Miss L.M. Johnson. Well, with the retrieve, no handler knows beforehand what the article is going to be. So, obviously, they practice with different articles. This is rather a soft article, not easily thrown. The dog is making a complete meal of it and will lose a lot of marks for doing that. 
again, the dog has to complete the movement round to sit and settle. Exercise finished and ten faults. Yes, ten for that. Right now another German Shepherd dog, Playboy of Troy, with Mr. R.A. Thomas. And this pair from Tanechti are the only representatives from Wales in this competition. The dog is an experienced one, steady, works very nicely indeed. The difference is in this exercise, he is not mouthing the article. Very calm, quiet dog. Rather slow on the finish. Thank you, exercise finish. And it's possibly that that cost him one point, one fault there as we look at Jay Jade now, with Mr. Come Smith. On, uh, Frank Bring Smith, of course, is again a very experienced handler who won Crufts in 1971 Bring with Jaff. This dog is much younger and he's going very well indeed. Take Beautiful it. present in front. Finish. Alert, keen dog. Thank you. Exercise finished. Nicely handled. And clear. Clear, no faults. So very good there with Jay Jade. Now Creston Muirside with Mrs. M. Mackenzie. This pair have come 500 miles from Arbroath in Scotland and are going very well at the moment. The dog is steady. A nice clean pickup there. Beautiful present in front. And clear. That's a clear one. The crowd like to see these dogs do it right, and let's hope that this one can as well. This is Jan's J, who we saw go clear in the send away with Mr. Poole. Let's see if he can try his hand properly, or his paws, or even his teeth, on the retrieve. And this article, um, being rather light in weight, the dog does not hear the sound of it dropping onto the floor, but as it's so visible, it's not presenting any problems. A nice clean pickup again. I'm sure Mr. Poole will be very satisfied with that. Finish. Exercise finished, thank you. Oh, I'm sure he'll be satisfied because he's clear as well. That's two events that he's gone clear in. And now we can move on to look at part of the distant control. And the first pair we're seeing, very popular pair here at Crofts, Aza of Tamari with Mrs. Holmes. Um, in this exercise, the dog is required to do six positions without coming forward more than a body length past the blue markers. You will hear Mrs. Holmes give the positions, and the dog must react immediately. has already won Crufts twice with the mother of this dog. Exercise finished, thank you. And clear. So that was a perfect demonstration of distant control. That sets the standard as we now look at Rogue of Sea Light with Mrs. P. Bellamy. And again, Bing Bellamy is a very experienced handler, having already won Crufts in 1969. Oh dear, Bing's blown it again. That was an extra command there. What a shame. Six. Exercise for you. Thank you, Bing. Thank you. And four faults. Four faults there for having to have a double command for Rogue of Sea Light. This is Crest of Muirside again with Mrs. Mackenzie. And notice how complete this dog's concentration is and how quickly he reacts to the commands. And he's really having to concentrate now because the public address system is booming out. That looked very good to me. Tremendous number of distractions here vast crowd and that public address system can start at any second 
Well, that was first class, no faults. And this is Brig with Mr. John O'Hara. Now, John is noted for his very clear commands. One. Brig, one. Two. Brig, six. Brig, two. Brig, six. Brig, two. And the dogs know when it's over too, don't they? Again, clear as we look at Ganaza Stefan, Chally with Mr. Farrington. Oh dear. He's already come forward from the markers. I'm afraid he'll lose a lot of marks for that. Alex, sit! It's right out of the area there. All his fans would be very disappointed at that, I'm sure. Yes, Mr. Farrington won't be too pleased with that. 12 volts, 12 volts there, as we end our look at the distant control and go on to the longest exercise of all, the heel work. This is Gerard Gilo with Mrs. Potter. The dogs are required to perform various manoeuvres, including right-hand turns, left-hand turns, and left-about turns, and they have to move to heel at slow, normal, and fast pace. The instructions, again, given to them by the steward. The dogs are required also, Peter, to keep their shoulders by the handler's legs, and you will notice that this is exactly what this dog does. Um, occasionally, he is inclined to go slightly forward and slightly wide. We will see. Doing very well in the competition at this point. Normal. Before this Straight. event started, just half a point lost. Left turn. Second. Very nice coming. left turn. Slightly ahead there, you Two. see. Moving on now to Ronan Close, Jamie of Stillmore with Miss Ackery. Again, a, an experienced handler, Paula has About already that. won Crufts with the father About of this that. dog. And although this is a young dog, he seems to me to be working extremely well. Paula is, of course, a very quiet handler. She never seems to be hurrying oh. herself. She's casual in her work, but all the time That's she's concentrating on getting Forward. that dog into the final lineup. Left turn. Very attentive all the time there. In fact, they lost two and a half points on that. Right if we look there. at Spring Farm Myth with Mrs. Barbara Igledon. This is the steady dog, quiet handler, moving left very nicely there. in this slow pace. Beautiful left about turn there. Right turn. Again, having to concentrate through that public address system as well. Normal. Into this, the normal pace, without any command from the handler, this dog is really working well. And we're back now with Mr. Thomas and Playboy of Troy. In with a very good chance before this event, one and a half faults, but in fact not performing too well here, running a little bit wide, not keeping his shoulder yes, in there. Yes, I'm afraid he is, Peter. He's not doing at all well here, and in fact there is a mistake already. Yes, this is not one of the set positions. He shouldn't have stopped there. No. Mr. Thomas being very generous to him and treating it as if it was correct. <laughs> but that will cost them all together on the, on the heel work 12 and a half faults as we look at Brig with Mr. John O'Hara again. Now, if Brig can do this exercise well, he stands a very good chance this year. This in and out of the poles is extremely difficult because the dog has to turn immediately when the handler goes round a pole. Right turn. Beautiful dog to watch, oh. this one. 
circle. Very and handsome. Fast pace forward. This outer circle, he is performing very well. In a good position. Slightly wide there. It's interesting, he doesn't turn his head round quite so much as uh, many of the other dogs we've seen. No, it's not necessary. Sometimes if they turn their head too much, they get accused of crabbing, their bottoms come out. Now, how about this now? Well, this at the moment, but there was a knee on the dog's head. Did you see that? Yes, he's pushing him round rather, And another he? one. Normal straight. So that's likely to cost him a point oh, or two. Oh, yes, indeed. Left turn. Very good performance apart from that. Must still be in contention. Halt. Exercise finished, thank you. And a splendid exercise indeed there. Just three faults for Brig on the heel work. And now, just two more events before we look at the leaderboard. The two minutes sit and Last the ten minute in. down. Now, for these events, the handlers leave their dogs in the preordained positions. You just see them actually leaving the dogs now for the 10-minute down. But through the magic of television, you don't have to sit there for 10 minutes to wait for the result, because we can tell you that none of the dogs faulted at all in either of these events. And you can see them absolutely relaxed and controlled as they sit or lie there waiting for their owners to return. So the leaderboard shows after six tests, Jay Jade and Crest of Muirside are joint leaders with two and a half faults. Gerard Gilo and Spring Farm Myth are joint third with three and a half, and Brig is still there in contention with just four. So it's between these five as we go to the last event, which is scent discrimination. Now in this, the judge handles two identical cloths. In this case, they're pale blue. One is given to a steward who takes it and places it amongst a pattern of other cloths set out in the hall. The other one is given to the handler. The handler then provides the dog with that scent, and all the dog has to do is go out amongst that pattern and find the matching one. Sounds easy? Well, let's wait and see. Here we've got Gerard Gilo with Mrs. Potter. It's very interesting also the methods that different handlers use to give their dogs the scent. If you watch, you will see each handler having a different way of doing this. Then you don't. There's the little pattern. For those watching in colour, the red cloths are decoys. They'll show up darker in black and white for you. The correct one is that one there by that number 13. And Gerard Gilo's got it. What a nice scent that was. Take it. Finish. Thank you. Yes, and no faults there, so can't be worse than third position, and we'll really put the pressure on this dog, Spring Farm Myth, with Mrs. Igledon. Joint third before this event. And Myth, of course, has a reputation for very rarely failing scent, so I would be very surprised if he doesn't bring in the right cloth this time. Word about those dark cloths, the decoys, they've been handled by other stewards to put a different scent on them, real decoys, Myth having a really good hunt around here. Oh, he's just being careful. I'm sure he'll do it in the end. In fact, there's a one and a half minute time limit on this event. Once the dog leaves the handler, one and a half minutes to collect the clock. Right, this time. Well done, Myth. Take it. Yes, you won't have any faults yet. Finish. Thank you. Exercise finished. And no faults, so Spring Farm Myth holds on to his place. Could even be better than third. Now it's JJ with Mr. Smith. Now at the moment, joint first, this dog. So if he does it perfectly, he could be the winner. Frank is giving the scent very, very carefully, and if you notice, talking to his dog at the same time, which is allowed at this point although I'm sure his heart is fluttering and he's holding his breath. Dog's going a little bit wild. If he steadies up, he should do it. 
No, he's too eager, I'm afraid. Take it. Mr. Smith's face there showed it all, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Bad luck, Frank. There's always next year, though. <laughs> <laughs> a philosophical remark there. 50 points lost. What a shame. So, JJ is out. We're now looking at Waggerland Warrior with Mr. Snow. Now, this dog just behind the leading group. So, if he does this well, he could be up there in the minor placings. And here we are, Mr. Snow, doing very well with this dog. He's known at home as Pablo and his great character. He's doing the send away, I think, at the moment. Well, he's not confused. He is confused, as you say, but he's trying. The dog is working all the time, not standing still, watching the handler for help. He's working at everything, going looking. A long way away from the pattern. Sometimes, you know, dogs don't like the cloth to be too near the handler. Time, Charlie. Time. And that's the time. He's out of time and is picking up the right clock now, but time has been called. Out of time. Take it. Finish. Well, he brought the right cloth at the end, but 50 points failed on the exercise. Again, a shame for Waggerland Warrior. And this, the other joint leader before this event, now out on his own, Crest of Muirside with Mrs. McKenzie. And this dog can afford to lose half a point and still be the overall winner. Yes, he's seen the pattern and appears to be working very methodically. Beautiful. Take it. Lovely Please. scent, Peter. Exercise for it, thank you. Half a point he gave, and that's it. That's enough. Preston Muirside is the dog obedience champion for 1980. Wonderful performance there. But well, that left us with the situation of a runoff for second place because Gerard Gilo and Spring Farm Myth tied. So this is a send away exercise from a different position from the original exercise. Gerard Gilo going first just out of the box, so this isn't perfect. But going first must put the pressure on Spring Farm Myth, who is to follow. This is Potter, must have nerves of steel to be out there at the moment. West on your arm for birth for a minute. Really? Well, now we have to wait and see. What is Spring Farm Myth going to do? On my this is Barbara Eagleden again. Tremendous pressure on them. You can see the crowd there, very attentive. This is for second place. And Myth's blown it, he's gone wide. And he's recalled. Mrs. Ingledon knows it. So that puts Gerard Gilo in second place. Spring Farm Myth takes third. A wonderful competition. The crowd have thoroughly enjoyed it. And so too have these two people. Because we have on the right there Mrs. McKenzie with Crested Muirside, the dog obedience champion for 1980. And on the left, Loella of Great Meadows, the bitch obedience champion, owned by Karina Smith. Well, that's the serious business of the day ended. Not that the next event isn't taken very seriously indeed by the contestants themselves, but it is designed as a piece of very light-hearted fun for the huge crowd here. It's an event 